Welcome back. So um, in this installment of Unboxed, um, I've been putting this off for a long time because it takes a lot of effort to show you this. Um, basically, I've been collecting Swatch watches since the mid 80s. Swatch watches were um, popular um, in the early 80s. Uh, they they uh, sponsored the Olympic Games, I believe. And um, they have really been making watches now since I think the late 70s, early 80s. And basically, I, as I said, I've been collecting Swatch watches since the mid 80s. That is a uh, Switzerland watch company. Um, they were very popular in the early to mid 80s whenever I first got my first watch um, and for some reason I was drawn to them um, the art style um, the name uh, the brand name um, the workmanship that went into making these watches too a lot of people think they're a cheap watch company they're not um, they make all types of watches and I'm about to show you so I have a collection of um, at least a hundred swatches I know it's insane I've really been collecting a lot the past few years here and there, more so before the pandemic, before I started recollecting for vintage games. I was an Atari collector for many years. Um, God, my beard's a mess. <laughs> so anyway, I'm excited to show you this. So bear with me. Now, these watches have names. A lot of them have little code names. It might be a certain number. It might be called like Night Stalker. Um, I don't know all the names of the watches offhand. I might get some of them wrong if I try. So I'm only going to mention the names that I see on the box or that I definitely remember because if not, I'll get a lot of hate. So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to take you through my little watch collection. I'm going to try to give it some, some resemblance of cohesion because I have a lot of different pieces. So let's get started. Hey guys, it's me again. Um, just wanted to say I've um, got a few things. I got today when I was thrifting uh, on the weekend and I also have been re renovating a little bit as you probably see I have an actual curtain instead of blanket because <laughs> I'm a grown ass man and I need a blank I need a real curtain on the window um, anyway so I've been doing a lot of renovations upstairs um, in my bit lounge um, that's because I um, acquired um, another arcade um, nothing expensive um, but I wanted to redo it anyway so um, anyway so I'm excited to show you that um, whenever it's done <laughs> it's, it's kind of an ongoing process right kind of like in here um, anyway so before I get started I want to say I've been playing master type for the Atari 800 which is a really weird kind of word game, as you see in the corner. But I love the graphics. Um, it's really cool. It's by Lightning Software in 1983. Um, it's kind of like one of those typing programs. I kind of love those. Um, so with that said, one of the things I got recently, speaking of typing programs, um, now I saw this as a kid advertised in... Mad, not not Mad Magazine. I think Three Two on Contact and World and some other magazines, but um, and computer magazines. Whenever I would see those, so I saw this online and I had to get it because uh, I'm gonna be able to play it soon, uh, and that's kind of a secret. But it's um, Mavis Beacon teaches typing. Um, this is a, like I said, a software program I saw throughout my childhood. I saw this woman here on everything. Um, and as a, uh, as someone who could type 130, 140 words a minute, which I pride myself on because I trained to do that many years ago in high school, but, um, I love typing programs. I think they're, they're fun, you know, um, 
this one has games you play like i think you're riding a car um and there's graphs and stats and everything and just really cool so i got this to play on a computer that um i haven't told you i have yet um my friend rick has helped me fix that so once it's fixed i'm going to put it over here in the corner where my nes is um over here <laughs> so um anyway mavis beacon teaches typing i think this is from 88 or so um anyway very cool um so um also i went thrifting today and i got a few things not very much um and a little something something so i only went to one thrift store and then, then i went to um well i went to the goodwill i go to and then i went to um noble gaming um so i'll go over that one last because i got that last so all right for the first so the first thing i saw was this thing for my mother um her birthday's in april and we're going to um um in about two weeks i think um we're going to be heading out to la for her birthday like we did last year so um i got this for her today world's greatest mom very cool huh i do have a really great mom um my whole family says that she should have won the congressional medal of honor for putting up with my dad for almost 50 years um but um uh, yeah she really is a special person and she's the reason um i want to help others she's the reason i have a good a really good heart as well not that my dad didn't but i got a lot of those qualities from her those kind of uh those kind of parental qualities i guess you'd say empathetic qualities um i got my emotions from my dad so <laughs> anyway so i'm really excited to give this to her for her birthday so another thing i saw now i almost left empty-handed except for the little statuette so but i saw these as i was leaving and then i freaked out so <laughs> i found this um star trek the prisoner of vega book um this is kind of a kid's book i think um but it's very well illustrated um, i've never seen one of these um i love that picture of the enterprise there um just to show you definitely looks like it's from the 70s um 1977 um but it's very cool it's kind of like a little like a children's book maybe you know um young child's book um very cool i love the drawings in this thing um just very neat um but anyway um i got this for just a couple of dollars but it's cool for the my little star trek collection um especially since i've never seen these before um uh yeah very cool so i love that the prisoner of vega um, I also picked up this book as well, Star Wars, The Jedi and the Force. This is a book from DK. I think it was for kids, like one of those books you see at the book fair probably. Um, but it's pretty cool. It's got a basic kind of overview of um, all the characters in the new Star Wars movies. Um, I think it's pretty neat. Um, it's got stuff about the wise teacher the respected the jedi the death of darth vader imperial fleet the end of anakin jedi hero jedi training jedi purge just all kinds of cool stuff um it says three books in one um find out what it takes to become a powerful jedi knight like obi-wan kenobi or a wise grandmaster like yoda learn about how the force can be used for both good and evil Obi-Wan Kenobi, Jedi Knight, The Story of Darth Vader, and The Legendary Yoda. 2014. Very cool. Um, so something else I found was this movie. Now, when I was a kid, I remember my parents taking me to see Jaws 3D in the movie theater. And talk about scary. I remember having my 3D glasses on, and there was there's a scene where this guy is in a cage under the water, and Jaws comes up and eats them basically and then you see his arm just kind of floating down the aisle of the movie theater it was so scary it's one of my early movies are going my early memories of going to the movies i can't remember which jaws it was um 
But anyway, it, I, it wasn't this one. It was before this one. But anyway, I got Jaws the Revenge. Um, this time it's personal. Um, from 87, it looks like. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure which, where this fits in the series. But it looks completely tacky. And I'm excited to watch it. Um, I was going to watch it today, but the Grammys were on. It says here, um, Jaws the Revenge. Lorraine Gary repeats her role as Ellen Brody, widow of Chief Martin Brody, played by Roy, Sh Roy Scheider in Jaws and Jaws 2. In the suspenseful sequel starring Oscar winner Michael Caine, after Deputy Sean Brody is killed by a shark off Amity Island, she joins her other son Michael, a marine biologist, his wife Carla, and their daughter Thea in the Bahamas. There she falls for Hoagie, a carefree pilot, and starts pulling, starts putting her life back together until a great white, white threatens Thea, and Ellen knows she has no chance but to face her fear in a final fatal showdown. Crazy. Jaws the Revenge. Um, so I also found this. Um, I didn't have this in my collection. I used to own this back in the day. Um, when it came out, I think it's... How long ago this was i think it came out in like 89 or something when i was 14 but it was one of the first cds i ever got in my um i basically had to save up with my job when i was 14 i remember to get my first cd player and it was a sony and i think it was 200 something dollars at walmart to put on layaway but um i joined the columbia music service which people around my age probably remember um they would send cds to your home well Back in the day, you could you could get CDs and then not pay for them, and then that you would get like twenty free CDs. <laughs> so I remember this was one of the ones I got for some reason. Um, but yeah, I've always liked this guy, and uh, it's Rod Stewart, Downtown Train, um, uh, kind of like his greatest hits. And I had this back when I was fourteen. I've got it again. Um, but yeah, I really like Rod Stewart, uh, his 80s and 70s stuff, so very cool. Downtown Train. Um, now, after I went there, I went to Gamers Anonymous, and I found this. I didn't have it. Uh, Tron Evolution um, Battle Grids for the Wii. Um, I'm just kind of starting up my Wii collection again. I only have a few games, and I'm a big Tron fan, so i um, glad to get this. It says, Game On, do you have the skills to become the ultimate grid games champion? Play Tron-inspired arcade games, light cycle racing, light discs, and grid tanks. Customize your program to become a legend of the game grids. Compete with your friends in four-player championship mode. Um, looks like this can't see a date on it. Anyway, very cool, Battle Grids. Um, so the back looks like there. Let me know if any of you guys have this and what you think. It was only five bucks. Um, so after I left there, I um, stopped by McDonald's because they still have the Mario Kart figures. Um, I was pissed because I didn't get a Mario Kart box. I got like, looks like some Dora box or a box for little kids. But inside was another um, Mario Kart. I got number eight, Toadette. Um, I think I got Toad last time, um, so now I have Toadette. <laughs> I was hoping to get Mario or one of the other main characters, but this is cool. So I got Toadette and her little race car there for my Happy Meal. So anyway, you guys, let me know what you think. Um, tell, call your mother and tell you love her. Um, and um, yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Hope to show you more of my kind of revamp boxing area soon and definitely my bit lounge it's gonna look completely different so um anyway thanks for tuning in we'll see you later bye hey guys blazer again just want to give you a little bit of swatch history real quick um swatch uh is a swiss watchmaker founded in 1983 by ernst thornk elmar mock and Jack K's Moeller. I'm sorry, I can't read this stuff, Ballistic. Golly, it's just too much. Anyway, um, it was a subsidiary of the Swatch Group. 
The Swatch product line was developed as a response to the quartz crisis of the 1970s and 80s. Wow, I didn't even know that existed. Uh, uh, in which expensive battery-powered quartz-regulated watches were competing against more established European watchmakers. Wow. Focused on artisanal craftsmanship, producing mostly mechanical watches. The name Swatch is a contraction of second watch, as the watches were intended as casual disposable accessories. Well, some could definitely say they were uh, disposable, but some of them aren't. Don't get me wrong. Laser! Oops. Anyway, back to the whole Swatch thing, I guess. See you on the other side. Hey guys, welcome back. So just got done editing the video um, of me and my friend Adam. Um, him and I hung out together for like three or four hours uh, a few days ago um, as of this recording. Um, I think on the 14th maybe of April. Um, but yeah, I'm posting that uh, soon. Um, it's going to be BCB uh, 42 and 43, um, a console review um, and an interview. Um, so stay tuned for that part one, part two. The first part, we're going to be looking at the um, Commodore um, C64 Mini by Retro Games from 2018. It's an emulation system. And uh, we also talk about the general world of Commodore and VIC-20 um, games and whatnot. So it's a really cool look. Uh, it is a longer episode. It's like an hour and a half. But we actually talked for like two hours. And I, a lot of the stuff that we talked about I wanted to keep in. So um, whenever I edit, I tend to err more on the side of let's keep as much content as we can, you know. So sorry it's so long. And I after that, and I will actually recorded it before that, I interviewed him about his uh, experiences with 8-bit computers, uh, Atari, Commodore, the Sinclair, um, the Spectrum, uh, just all kinds of um, computer, vintage computing goodness and gaming goodness. So watch that, please. Um, he's a great friend of mine locally, him and our gaming buddies. Um, we have a, a um, we have a, a, also I met Chris and Rick um, as well so there's like four of us really <laughs> and another Chris um, so there's like five of us which is awesome but anyway um, so for this unboxing um, I want to do these because these are on my table and I want to get them out of here <laughs> um, because I've been editing video for um, you know a little bit now and I'm, I want to get this over with so I can breathe you know but these are gonna be uh, cool to you so I got three pieces of mail to unbox. Uh, these came over the past few days. Um, it's Sunday now, Easter Sunday. Happy Easter. Belated Easter to everyone. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. So this one here comes from Cornelius, North Carolina. Player's Choice Video Games. wonder what that is. Um, so these are things I got off eBay more than likely. Oh, this one is. Um, so... I got Flashback the Quest for Identity for the Jaguar. Now this is not the official case. Uh, this is actually, this is a replacement case for the game. Uh, my friend Adam actually, who I'm talking about, gave me, well, I'm going to buy the cart and manual for this from him, as well as Basic XE. Uh, and so he didn't have the box. So I got this replacement box to go on my collection. Um, and it's it's one of those like, generic cases you see. Um, I really just wanted to be able to put the game in the, the manual so um, and display it. So this was like, um, I think $10 on eBay, $9. Um, so I didn't want to pay for the game again, obviously. But um, cool. It's an interesting game. I've yet to play a lot of it. I've just watched the intro and I've got so many things going on. But it's next to my list to play. So I'm excited. Heard a lot about it. So it says in the back, uh, you're Conrad B., Heart, Galaxis Bureau of Investigation agent, and right now you're stranded on a faraway planet after discovering an alien plot to overtake Earth. You must travel and find your way through four planets back to Earth and foil the alien's sinister and deadly plans. The award-winning sci-fi action adventure comes to Jaguar, and it's going to rip you right out of your comfortable little century and hurl you smack into a time and place that will have you begging for a nap. 
an incredible gaming experience that breaks new ground in the areas of action and adventure from EGM's 94 Video Game Buyer's Guide. It's got film style, fluid 24 frames per second animation, and gives lifelike movements to this wild action game. You star as Super Agent Conrad Hart, stranded on a faraway planet after you discover an alien plot to overtake Earth. Seven challenging and intriguing levels of action that never let up. Six graphically detailed sectors from 1993 for the Atari Jaguar. So I'm excited to play that. So that's just the case, as I said. I showed the game already, or if I haven't, I will. Because <laughs> it's hard to keep track sometimes. I've, I do have a little stash of unboxings to put in episodes. They're, they're not too dated. At the most, I think one might be two or three weeks old. So I try to put them out whenever I make them. Um, but I like to have a little cushion, you know. So hopefully you'll see the game first <laughs> before you see this one. Um, so let me open this here. Um, I think I know what this is. Um, it's another game. Uh, this comes from Orlando, Florida from a seller on eBay. Ugh. Some of these things are harder to open than uh, anything you'd believe. Dang. I hate when they put tape on these things. I don't understand. Uh, there we go. <laughs> I'm about to lose it for a minute. So, uh, they got another box in here, of course. Sometimes they wrap it so much that you almost damage the the box that you want that's inside of it, you know? Okay. Let's just rip this open. Okay. And I actually, um, yes, I know what this is. I didn't have this in the box for the Atari 5200. But I did have a cart, so I'm starting to collect boxes for that system. Um, right now I'm getting some of the cheaper games out of the way. Because I don't want to even... I think Bounty Bob Strikes Back is the most expensive game I've seen for the 5200 in the box. And it goes for hundreds of dollars. It's kind of crazy. Well, this is not one of those games. This was, I actually bought this kind of damaged in the box. Or the box a little bit damaged. It was really cheap. It was a few bucks. Um, but... I just wanted to get the box for my collection, and this has other stuff in it too, it came with. <coughs> okay, and finally, we got real sports football for the Atari 5200. Um, I'm not a sports fanatic, but there are only like 70 Atari 5200 games, so I'm trying to get some of these out of, um, out of the way that are cheaper. Um, so this is complete, even though the box is a little crushed. Um, it comes with a football playbook, which is awesome. Um, visitors. Um, the manuals for these things are just amazing. Uh, this is a playbook, so you can actually plan your plays out on the video game. And it's got tons of maps and very cool. So there's this one, and there's also the home players football playbook, I guess for the home team. Um, very cool. Got some more. This looks a little loose. Uh, but this has little plays in it too. Um, very neat. Um, so excited to get the playbooks as well as the manual. Um, and when you open it up, it's got table of contents, uh, your ball and goal to go gameplay using the 5200 controllers, the trackball. Um, and it says hands up. It's a pass. I love the manuals for the 5200 games. They're so cool. Um, so yeah, um, very cool. Talks about running and punting, kicking field goals, passing, defense, changing plays. Um, not a very graphically intensive game, but, um, yeah, it was one of the cheaper ones to get in the box. I think it was, like I said, under $10, especially with the box kind of a little screwed up. And here is the game. And it came with overlays as well, which is also why I got it. That fits over the controller. But it also could go in the back of the game where there's a storage area. And I'll show it once I get it in there. <laughs> yeah. Close enough. So there's the 
overlay inside the cartridge. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much everything in there. So glad to get real sports football for the Atari 5200. Very cool. And last but not least, we got this thing here. Um, can't remember for the life of me what this is, although I saw it the other day on my eBay. This comes all the way from San Leon, Texas. Uh, I used to live in Texas. I have no idea where that is. Maybe near San Antonio. I don't know. Somewhere in southern Texas, maybe. South Texas. Um, let's see here. Oh, yes. Okay. And I gonna had this game, not the box. It is, and it was cheap because the box is a little damaged. I think it was like seven dollars. Uh, one on one basketball for the Atari seven eight hundred. Another sports game that I don't really want, but I want it for the collection. Um, look at that, Larry Bird and Julius Doctor J Irving on the cover there, looking all young and hot <laughs> from the eighties. Slam dunk basketball action. So this is a basketball game for the 7800. It says it's a super game cartridge. Play basketball with Larry Bird or Julius Dr. J Ir Ir Irving. Choose one all-star as your opponent. You become the other one. Then jump, shoot, and win. This amazing sports game features realistic offensive and defensive moves, fatigue factors, hot streaks, a shot clock, even instant replay and a shattering backboard. Superb graphics and exciting sound effects put you right on the court. Award-winning action game developed with the assistance of Julius Irving and Larry Bird. More complex game patterns, varied strategies, and excitement than ever before. For one or two players, four skill levels. For the Atari 7800 with the Pro Line controller. A lot of fans call that the Pain Line controller because it's after two minutes your hand starts hurting. Just the control on the joystick is very kind of hard um tough in the hand you know so it, there's dates done here 83 from electronic arts and 87 from atari in sunnyville california so one-on-one -on -one basketball guys um so again i already had the card upstairs just not the box so i'll probably sell that other card as long as this one works which it might not i don't know um and when you open this up um we got the warranty which is good to have and the manual, which is in that red black Atari Lynx look from the cheap printing company in China or whatever. Um, very cool. Jump, shoot, score. Not as cool as the 5200 uh, manuals. Uh, it's got scoring back there. But, um, you know, at this time the company was struggling, so they couldn't spend as much on this stuff as they normally could, right? Um, so, anyway, that is one-on-one -on -one basketball for the 7800. Let me know which ones of these are your favorites, um, guys. Um, and leave a comment down below. Subscribe, like, let me know what you think, alright? Much of Atari goodness. Have a great day, and I hope you had a great Easter. Uh, which was a while, you're probably when you see this. Have a great day. Bye. So guys, this is my entire Swatch collection. Um, I had to get it out from various places. I might be missing a piece or two. Actually, I know I am. Because I see one by my bed over here as well. So I have a lot of pieces. Don't you think so, Coop Kitty? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he thinks so. They're kind of all over the place. So I try to put these in kind of an order. I know it's overwhelming right now. Um, like I said, I have these well packed away and other places. I really want to get a display case for these because they are unique and very collectible. So it's probably a few thousand dollars of the swatches right here. So I'm going to get started. So one of the first watches that I ever purchased on my own was this one here. This one's called Tova Rish. It came out in 96, I believe. I purchased this on my own money. Um, I love this watch. It basically, it's got glow in the dark numerals. It's made after kind of a Russian motif, um, labor and all that. Very cool. 
I love this watch. It's a, called a scuba because it's got this little dial around it. So that's one of the first watches I bought on my own. My dad bought me a few over the years and I'd lost them when I was when I was younger. So these are all ones I've, I've collected since then. So I'm just gonna back up here. These are kind of my um, parts of my collection. There, there's some broken ones too. These are part of my collection that I, I, that I refer to as just kind of the originals. Um, just fit around the wrist. They're smaller watches. Um, over here, I've got some more of those. Um, the, this one here, though, however, is called a scuba because it's got the uh, little dial around it. But here's some more of just the regular little wrist watches. Uh, very cool in their own right. Some of them rare, some of them more rare than others. Over here, I've got a scuba in the box, which is a green watch. I love that one. It's forest green. Um, it does work. I've just got it put away in the box. So after I started collecting those, I started getting into the pop swatches. Pop swatches were a type of swatch that came out in the mid 80s, I believe, um, where the watch face pops out and you replace the casing with whatever style you want. So here's two of the very first pop swatches, I believe, um, just red and black, and they pop out of here. And, and you can wear them on things. This watch comes out, as I said. You, you can wear them on your clothing. You took different types of things with it. There's another case in the box there. So here's some collectible ones I got off eBay. I love that one there. They're very intricate. If you really look at them, um, they are very, very cool. Um, I love this one. It's got that kind of a, a time little motif going on there. I love that. That's a little um, stopwatch. Um, there's another one that I love. Um, and here is, uh, here's some more variations on the pop swatches they made. One's a keychain that plays music, musical notes. It's called Music Call, I think is what that line's called. There's a regular one there, glow in the dark hands. There's a cool groovy little silver one there. Um, uh, here's some modern pop, pop swatches they came out with recently. Again, the watch comes out. Uh, and you can attach that to whatever band you want. Very cool. Um, and there's a black one there too, that's new. So um, I got those, then I started getting into, they have this watch called System 51, which are totally automatic watches. Um, and as you can see on the back, whenever you wind these, for instance, the back kind of moves in a very cool way. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's very neat. The back moves when you wind it. Um, anyway, love these swatches. Um, these are getting really rare, hard to find. This one here shows a pattern. Now th this watch is powered by your movement. So very, very cool. As you can see that pattern there, very intricate, very cool. Um, so as you move, this watch powers itself. That's why I love the automatic System 51 swatches. These might be backwards, forgive me. There's the blue and the red. There's the first two I bought when they came out. Um, there's a gray one. So these all had different designs on the back, as you can see. And when, and when you wind them, they move. Um, I love System 51 swatches. Very neat, I like this red one too. Very cool. So yeah, those are some of my favorites. Then I kind of got back into the wrist watches with the um, elastic aluminum or quasi aluminum band. Um, here's some back here. Now these all have names, like I said, but I'm not going to, I think that, that one there's called Black Guard, for instance. Um, I'm not gonna go into too much detail because I might get them wrong. This is actually a newer one. I picked up a year or two ago at the Swatch store in North Park Mall in Dallas. Um, here's some other ones here. Not sure if you can see these, I love that one. Um, there's just so much to show. I could spend that whole episode. All right, sorry, I could spend a whole season on those. Very, very cool. So then I kind of got into the, they have a line known as Irony, which is basically stainless steel. This is one of my favorites I wear still to this day. I um, can't remember the name of this one, but I absolutely love it. It's gorgeous. Um, and again, it's not plastic, it's real. Um, got some glow-in-the-dark features as well. Um, I just love that one. Um, I also have some more. Here's another one I love to wear. Um, that's a little newer. Um, 
This is an older style one, which still works. I replaced the batteries in these. Here's a System 51, actually. Um, I think it, uh oh. There's a System 51, actually, I, I believe. Um, but it's also an irony. Um, there's a glow in the dark. Um, here's one. Um, I think this one's called Heart and Soul. I love this one. This is one of my favorites. Look at that. It's just so beautiful. Um, I do need new batteries in these probably. Oh, this is a automatic as well. Yeah, see, it says automatic and it moves with your movement. So um, I love this watch. This one retails for at least a couple of hundred dollars. I got it for a hundred dollars on eBay a few years ago. I love it. I think it's called Heart and Soul. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, this is a ladies swatch bracelet. Um, doesn't fit me at all. Um, <laughs> Might fit on my ear, but uh, very cool. Um, so after I got into those, I kind of started re recollecting the digital ones. Um, here is a digital watch, a swatch. Um, it does have sound to it and voice. Um, I had one of these in the 90s. Um, I don't see it here. It might be in a different box. I'm sorry, I've got some watches falling over on me. Um, here's one I got. They used to have these things called... Um, Hits or Hots, I believe, or Hits and Hots at the Swatch store. Here's one I got recently, which is one from the 80s that has this thing called Snow Pass, I believe. And well, I, want, I don't want to take this out of the box because it's in there pretty tight. But what it does is you can get in certain sporting events at that time for a discount, I believe. Um, here's a, another Pop Swatch, actually. I have in the wrong, wrong place. As you can see, it's got this cool... Uh, W um, fabric little uh, band around it. Very cool. And you can untie it. So um, let me take you over here real quick. <coughs> so I also have some swatch books and materials. I love this swatch book. A guide for connoisseurs and collectors. Here's some promotional stuff I got over the years. I've been part of the swatch club as well. I don't think I am right now. But basically they send you a swatch. And for your birthday, you get a, a goodie. I think I got a bag for my birthday. So here's the watch I got when I joined the Swatch Club a few years ago. How cool is that? <laughs> very cool. Um, it's very cool. It's kind of like a maze in there. Um, and it was called Follow the Dots. I love that swatch. This one I got back in 96. Nice. I'm sorry. I got in the early thousands, I believe, when I was in the Swatch Club for the first time. I think it was the year 2000. This one is called Genetic Code. It came in this test tube. This used to be opaque, guys. But as you can tell, it's seen better days. I was a heavy smoker back then and partier, so of course it's brown now. But it's cool. They would, they would put your genetic code on there, and you could go online and see your name on a website. Kind of neat for the time. And it's got this test tube holder with it that's breaking on me. Here are some bags. I also have a Swatch phone. Yes, they made phones back in the day that would glow. This was a pretty plain one, but I got it for really cheap on eBay. Um, very neat. It's got that weird kind of pattern. <laughs> anyway, I love that. So um, one last thing I want to show you my collection. This goes by pretty fast. I know I have at least 20, like 10 or 20 or so that aren't here. So there must be some other box. I started, I started recollecting hardcore again a few years ago. Um, these are newer ones that I purchased. We have this one here. I think that's called Cherokee, the red one here. Um, I got that maybe about a year ago. Um, here's a cool one with a rubber kind of a strap on it. I'll just take that out for you. Very neat. I like that one too. Um, this one here I love. It's this little alien one here. Love that one. It glows in the dark, obviously. This is one of my favorites. It's called, uh, oh, I'm not sure. It's called, right there. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's cool. I think it's called Watch Face or Swatch Face, but it's cool. Everything is named on it. Strap two, case, face, glass, strap one, loop. I love that one. Very cool. And it came in this cool little jigsaw box here. Here's some other ones I got that I just that really caught my eye at the time. Um, these have some great little designer patterns on them. Here's one that's kind of hounds to the looking. I love that one. Um, as you can see, these did cost $75 at the time. So, of course, they're a little higher in value. I love this one, too. Very neat. 
I love to keep them in the box if I can. This is one of my favorites. Um, this one here is just beautiful. This is part of, I think, the London or the England collection. These uh, three in particular, I believe. Um, this is one of my favorites. It's just got different linens on the plastic there. And it's gorgeous. Uh, let me see if I can open this for you. Because this one, when I saw this, it just kind of took my breath away, you know? Um, it's just beautiful. Um, I just love everything about it. So neat. I love the fabric impressions on the plastic. Um, doesn't go in the dark or anything. I just really love the detail. And this is like 3D looking in person in there. So... So that's basically that, guys. Um, I also purchased, they started re-releasing swatches from the past. This is one when they, they re-released the one from the 80s. Um, and it's very cool, as you can see. It's got that red-blue little motif. Um, and, and again, this is patterned after an 80s design that was popular. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I think it's called Sir Swatch. Or no, I'm sorry. It's called it's called Nine to Six, is what this one's called. See, you can see that. But anyway, that's pretty much my swatch collection, you guys. I know that was a lot to go over, um, and I can go into a lot more detail. But I just wanted to show you the main part of my collection on my bed because it's too big. <laughs> anyway, let me know what you think. If you collect swatches, if you think I'm a weirdo, whatever, I know I am. Um, this is one of those things that I just loved collecting over the years. Oh, and really quickly, here's the bag I got for my birthday at the Swatch store. You know, they gave me a coupon. It was part of the club. And I went and I got that cool bag. Um, here's some other cases for my System 51 swatches. Here's the one for the red one, I believe. Um, here's the one for the blue one I showed you. Very cool. Um, yeah, we got some more cases in there um of my my swatches Th these are ones i had on on display um system 51 irony and i can put these back because they all have code uh names and stuff on them so anyway you guys thank you for indulging in my little swatch watch time thanks for watching have a great one get your java on bye <clears throat> hi there blaze again so Ballistic forgot, totally forgot, that he's got this Swatch wall clock right here. Um, he found it at a thrift store about uh, about three years ago, and uh, he says uh, about $5 or something. Um, this is missing, actually. If you look closer, it's missing the hands or the straps on the bottom and the top. Um, that's because it didn't come with that. It was broken off, so... Um, he didn't get that part, but these sell for like two or three hundred dollars on the website. And this is one fashioned after a real famous 80s watch. Um, I think it was called Win Unit, I'm not sure, but uh, anyway, it's a cool wall clock he's got in the bathroom in here. Um, and I, I really like it. Um, he's also got a pair of uh swatch sunglasses in the box, and he can't find them right now, but somewhere around here, you know, there's just too much stuff around here, you know, it makes you feel all jittery and stuff. I just, I just can't sleep at night. It's almost too much, you know? Um, anyway, um, I'm going to go drink my 18th cup of coffee. I'll be right back. Anyway, y'all, that's, that's pretty much it of the swatch thing. Uh, I just want to thank you for watching me right now. And, um, I look forward to seeing you some more, um, in the next video or two. Um, and, uh, yeah, swatches are pretty cool, huh? Kind of like little pieces of art or whatever. We didn't have no art on my planet. We just incinerated everything you know uh everything was like single use you know um so everything was clean that way we didn't have no old stinking watches laying around or anything uh anyway we'll see you next time and hopefully um i'll have a little playmate or something i don't know shh keep it a secret bye y'all